Welcome to Item Breakdown, a series where I analyze every single item in Mario Maker 2, go over their properties, and find interesting ways to use them in our own levels. This video is all about the Super Acorn. The Super Acorn is an item type asset exclusive to the new Super Mario Bros. U game style. It is a gravity affected power up and will travel to the right unless it comes into contact with a solid object its behavior essentially mirroring a super mushroom. If Mario collects a super acorn, he is transformed into Flying Squirrel Mario. If Flying Squirrel Mario takes damage, he will revert into Super Mario. Flying Squirrel Mario has a few unique moves that separates him from the scurry. Holding B in midair causes Flying Squirrel Mario to glide through the air, descending slower and moving through the air faster than normal. It is possible to change directions while gliding by moving left or right, however there is a bit of a buffer. Flying Squirrel Mario is able to glide while holding objects and is even able to ground pound as well. Pressing any of the trigger buttons while in midair causes Flying Squirrel Mario to propel himself upwards about 5 tiles and forwards about 3 tiles in whichever direction he is facing. He cannot ascend while holding an object. Flying Squirrel Mario is able to ascend once, only being able to ascend again once he either lands on a surface, bounces off of an enemy, grabs a vine, is grabbed by a swinging claw, hovers above a twister's airstream, lands inside a vehicle, or lands in water. Flying Squirrel Mario's glide ability has reduced effectiveness after using ascend. He's also unable to twirl in midair if he's able to ascend, given they're mapped to the same buttons. However, after ascending, he is able to twirl normally. Flying Squirrel Mario will cling onto a wall for around 2 seconds before sliding down it normally. He can still wall jump normally in either of these states. Interestingly enough, when clinging to the side of a moving conveyor belt, he is carried in whichever direction the conveyor is turning. Finally, holding the spin jump button causes Flying Squirrel Mario to spin jump double Mario's normal spin jump height, from 3 to 6 tiles high. However, the height of his spin jumps off of enemies is not increased. A Super Acorn has two modifications, winged and parachuting. A winged Super Acorn travels across the screen, rising and falling one tile off of its horizontal axis as it moves. A parachuting Super Acorn descends slowly toward the bottom of the screen, resuming its basic behavior when it lands. A Super Acorn can be placed inside of a block, pipe, and bill blaster. When spawning from a pipe, it will travel to the right, unless coming out of a left-facing pipe. The pipe will also spawn one at a time, only producing another once the first is no longer loaded. When spawning from a bill blaster, it will travel in the direction it was launched in. Again, it will only spawn another once the first is no longer loaded. A Super Acorn is able to be placed inside and occupy a Koopa Clown Car and Lakitu's Cloud. In a Koopa Clown Car, it will pilot the vehicle towards Mario, and in a Lakitu's Cloud, it will pilot the vehicle on a horizontal plane. A Super Acorn is able to be placed inside as well as grabbed by a Swinging Claw, and it is also able to be placed on a track. Mario can still wear and benefit from the effects of a Buzzy Beetle and Spiny Shelmet while cosplaying as a flying squirrel. Also, his cute little squirrel ears poke through the top of his hat. Yoshi is able to grab a Super Acorn with its tongue. It will remain in Yoshi's mouth indefinitely. A Super Acorn travels much slower through liquids and is not destroyed by either lava or poison. Flying Squirrel Mario is unable to use any of his abilities while underwater. In the night ground theme, a Super Acorn will bounce erratically in the direction it would normally roll in. In the night airship and sky themes, a Super Acorn is affected by low gravity. Finally, a Super Acorn is part of a status clear condition, requiring the player to reach the goal as Flying Squirrel Mario. So, now that we know how it works, how do we work with it? Introduced in patch 3.0, the Super Acorn is a power-up that feels like it should have been here from day one. I honestly can't believe someone at Nintendo thought the propeller suit represents New Super Mario Bros. U better than the Super Acorn. 
Nevertheless, it's here now, and boy oh boy does it really shine. While its mechanics might not be as complex as other power-ups, it gives just enough additional movement options to improve a level from the sidelines, or be the centerpiece of a stage. But let's begin with what I personally think it's best suited for, traditional levels. It really feels at home in ground, airship, and sky themes. Flying higher than an eagle, this nut is the wind beneath my wings. Just having this to readjust Mario's position mid-air is a must. It also enables some really clever optional collectibles, either hiding up in the clouds or swooping down beneath ledges. I will say though that, while it's no cape feather, there is still the issue of being able to breeze through any level that isn't properly designed for this kernel. If you don't want the player to be able to glide their way across the top of your entire course, simply add some vertical terrain to force them to reconsider. Where else can we find our favorite sugar glider plumber? Soaring between saws and spikes, of course. Platforming, speedrunning, and Kaizo level creators always welcome power-ups with additional movement options, and this is surely the nut to crack. Gliding, ascending, wall clinging, it's a versatile tool with plenty of applications. Something I've really enjoyed seeing is clinging onto conveyor belts to gain some vertical height, then jumping off of them at a vantage point. This is a trick I had no idea would be as useful as it turned out to be. I also feel like descending down tall vertical levels while avoiding obstacles is a decent challenge, although there's definitely a good and bad way to do this. Don't forget that even though the player can hover in the air longer, they still need ample time to react to what's in front of, or below them. Now, you might have noticed that there was no puzzle section here, and I stand by my decision. No, I'm not saying you can't design a puzzle around the Super Acorn. This is Mario Maker. You can make a puzzle out of anything. I just feel that, given it's inherently a movement-oriented power-up, these puzzles would have to be extremely well designed in order to feel good to play. However, something I do want to point out is that in the night ground theme, the height a Super Acorn bounces is seemingly random. This means that any randomizer machines you happen to make in this really specific game style and level theme combo can be made much, much more simply. Plop an acorn down as your input, a few note blocks as your outputs, and presto! A much cleaner looking randomizer with an almost immediate result. Nifty. And that's just the cup of this top-notch nut. If you're looking for more inspiration, check out another one of these item breakdowns. A huge thank you to my patrons and YouTube members for making this series possible, and I'll see you in the next one.